Hi, my name is Oliver and uh, to get this out first, I'm not a YouTuber and uh, I don't make uh, videos regularly, so uh, please excuse the quality and uh, also excuse my English. Um, yeah, I'm into retro, retro computing um, since a few months again, I would say. My first computer was a WIC20 um, way back. Uh, and I uh, enjoy some of the retro computing video channels out there. One of them is the channel of Matt Heffernan, who uh, has some excellent uh, tutorial videos on assembler programming. And he did a 8 bit battle royale on his vlog in the last weeks, where he compared uh, different. Um, yeah, old and new retro computers uh, in their performance um, using a simple Mandelbrot uh, program. Um, but one uh, new retro computer was missing, the Mega 65. So um, I stepped in, cloned uh, his repository and ported the C64 code to the Mega 65. Yeah, um, what is this Mega 65? It's a um, new design based on an old prototype, the C65 prototype, Commodore designed somewhere between the C128 and the Amiga. Um, it um, was found some prototypes and uh, ROMs were uh, read from it. They were not uh, production quality, but it was a base and some enthusiasts uh, began to uh, yeah, finish the work. And then uh, um, a new hardware platform was developed on a FPA base with new CPUs and features and um, um, uh, injection molded case was crowdfunded and yeah this thing will have a 3.5 uh, inch floppy drive it runs at 40 megahertz but it also can run at uh, 3.5 megahertz which is the speed the c65 would have had if it w would have been released and it also can run at 2 megahertz and 1 megahertz for c64 compatibility yeah what did i do um for the basic i just used some 24-bit pokes um, to directly access screen and color ram because uh, yeah, it's easier than bank switching, and you have the ability in uh, on the in the Mega 65 Basic to um, do a direct poke to the flat memory, which is quite nice. Then I avoided multiplication, as you always should. Um, I added a uh, um, um, uh, timing. Um, yeah, a timing uh, procedure around it, which uses the Mega 65 RTC to um, stop the time the Mandelbrot takes, so I don't need to handle a stopwatch. And yeah, I use the cursor keyword uh, from Basic 65 to place my cursor where I want it on the screen. So let's switch to the basic program. Let us start the emulator. Oh, I will make it a big bigger, bit bigger. And we need the disk. So first we are in a somewhat C65 compatibility mode running at 3.5 megahertz. Out of the basic program and let's start it. Um, the program runs in 80 by 25 uh, mode, text mode. So 
uh, 60 columns are used by the Mandelbrot. And yeah, I have some place on the right side where the program will display the execution time after it has finished. Ah, nearly there. So, and there we have it. Basic uh, at 3.5 megahertz takes 47.91 seconds. Um, I can also show you the program. Here in line 210 to 240 are the um, 24 bit pokes. You can also use hexadecimal numbers, which is really nice. Um, and another nice feature you can scroll in your basic code. Ah, and as you see, uh, there is some syntax highlighting, which is also nice. So let me load up the assembler version and then we start this. And we are at 4.55 seconds for the assembler version. Okay. So what did I do for the assembler version? Um, well, the uh, Mega 65 uh, uses a 45 GSO2 CPU, which is an evolution of the 4510 CPU the C65 would have had which in turn is an evolution of the 65CEO2 or the 6502 of the C64. Um, what can it do? It, it has a lot of nice features. Uh, one is uh, the ability to move the zero page to somewhere else in memory. So I use zero page addresses for all memory storage in the assembler program. And it can use a zero page or base page, a 32-bit pointer with set register indexing to uh, directly access the flat memory without banking. Um, the 45GSO2 has all the features the 65CEO2 uh, had. So, um, yeah, ST set and such things and transfer commands. So I use those too. Um, then uh, the thing has an integrated DMA controller, which would have been separate on the uh, C65 development hardware, but here it's integrated in the CPU and you can use it to fill memory blocks, copy memory blocks quite fast. And I just use it at the beginning to erase the screen instead of printing clear home. Uh, and I have a basic boilerplate around the assembler program to um, do the timing as I did in the basic program. I can show it here. Now you can see first I clear the timer, then I call the assembler, then I save the time in the variable and then I print it on the right side. So now we've seen what the programs do at 3.5 megahertz, which is the speed of the not released C65. And now we go to the real 40 megahertz of the Mega 65, load up again the basic version and start it. And it is faster as is expected as the assembler version in 3.5 megahertz coming up at 4.15 seconds and last but not least the assembler version in the full speed and as you might guess this is quite fast yeah zero dot four rounded seconds. Yeah, I did not use all the features the CPU has. So for example, the um, uh, 
45GSO2 also has a mode where it can use all of its four registers A, X, Y and Z as a virtual 32-bit number and then do addition, subtraction and such stuff with this virtual 32-bit register and that's also quite fast. And the real hardware Mega 65 will have a multiplier multiplier divider unit integrated which can be uh, which always will multiply and divide two 32 bit numbers at a certain memory location and store the result in 64 bit in two other memory locations um, and it takes one clock cycle for a full multiplication and up to 16 clock cycles for full division of those two 32-bit numbers. So with that I guess it will be even faster. But I don't think this is something for the text mode um, version. This is more something to try if we go graphics and higher resolution. And I'm uh, interested into in doing that. Well, that's my testing on the Mega 65. I hope you enjoyed it and yeah, perhaps see you next time if I decide to make another video. Bye!